Hello everybody, Shabri Bird from Quantum Agriculture here with Hugh Lovell, our leader. And he, we are talking about this cover cropped little field within our garden. Um, so Hugh, tell us about this. Well, uh, I'm trying to build biomass. The basic is that you have to maximize your biomass production in order to maximize your digestive activity. If you get both of those right, you've got a fertile piece of land. So back in early, like late October, early November, then I sowed this down in barley, which didn't come up all that quickly. So I sowed it down again in rye and wheat. And in that rye and wheat and barley, I planted crimson clover because that's the legume is the opposite of the grass this is a great bee food and i planted peas this is snow peas we've had pea tips last night in our stir fries and there's also in here there's turnips this is a turnip going to seed yeah i know these are all seeds you gathered particularly the turnip yeah, seeds yeah that's my own turnip seed and then there's cleavers, which is a weed, you might say, but it's also a dynamic medicinal. Well, it's, it's also got interesting gestures there. Makes a lot of biomass. And, of course, there's dock and poke and whatever other wild plants are in here. But basically, I've got like at least three grains, cereal grains, at least two winter legumes. Oh, I've got vetch in here too. So that's three winter legumes. And they have grown with such mighty, uh, like uh, abandoned, that they have lodged. So they've fallen over and brought the whole field down more or less. Plus we had deer in here when it rained real hard. Uh, about a month ago or a little bit less and they made tracks you can see their tracks down through here you can see where they wandered mm -hmm. and so that brought the field down and it makes it hard to cut but i'm cutting it off with a scythe and you can see over here some of the haystacks that are going to be used for mulch on beds for tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and all sorts of things. So you're growing your own life force here. I'm growing my own life into this garden and its soil and environment. And you've been planting and this every fall as a winter crop since we've been since we've been starting on this homestead again. Yeah, but I never have had it grow better than this one. This is surely the most biomass I've produced any winter. And I see flea bane out there. That's that white sort of da daisy-like flower. And there's wild geranium and all kinds of things that kind of keep the pests away. Mm -hmm. And if you looked up there at my cabbages, I haven't had any cabbage worm moths around them yet. I am also noticing, because we're going to put this film on Facebook, your new terraces that you've been hand digging, which is like masterful sculpting of the land. Yeah, I've been kind of sculpting it because it's really difficult to work on the slope. It's very steep. So I've got about three more terraces to cut and then the rest of this is levels out pretty much and I may not have to cut it in. So that'll terraces. be our pumpkin patch and... Oh, something like that, yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of... So, yeah, this is... I'm a little late on cutting this barley. Barley goes to seed real early. And so I'm afraid some of this seed might try to sprout. So it's kind of urgent at this point that I get it cut down. Okay, so let's show you, show us what you're doing with the scythe. Okay, well the scythe is like a great big knife. And it's more like a bread knife than it is like a cleaver. Well, so you have to slice through in this fashion to cut the, you know, the tops off the roots. Show us how this is balanced. And, this is uh, an unusual this is, this handle. This is a very good design for people used to cut all their hay and everything else this way. 
This handle is non-functional. It should work much better, but it doesn't. So I didn't get the stroke quite right there, but... So describe to us the stroke. I'm hoping I can show you. See how it... Like, when I catch it right, this thing is designed to scoop it up and release it when you pull the blade back. Okay. So... I can take this kind of and roll it out of the way. Oh, so you're gathering it up to also. Cut. Okay. So I've noticed through the years since we'd come back from Australia in the winter that you were constantly keeping everything under cover crop, this being multiple cover crops. And I've been watching, you know, people say, oh, you're growing crops. And I said, no, Hugh's growing soil. That's exactly right. You can't grow crops until you've got soil. It has to be supporting. It has to have a lot of life into it. And that implies organization of the elements. And what happens is the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, the nitrogen, the, even the sulfur, to say nothing of the hydrogen in the rain, those enter into this interaction with the soil that gets the silicon and the cations, the metallic elements in the soil, to elaborate into a plant. And the plant is basically where the atmosphere has raised up a little bit of the soil into the sky to catch the sun and to build this interaction between the atmosphere and the soil. And then you have vitality, you have biomass. You get enough biomass, your animal digestion feeds it back again, recycles it to the next round of biomass, and then you start really cooking. Yep, lively begets life. <laughs> life begets life. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Hugh Lovell. You guys should order Hugh Lovell's book, Quantum Agriculture, Biodynamics and Beyond, and take a look at our YouTube channel, Quantum Agriculture. Best for today.